Hello, welcome to Algebra 1. We're going to use all the skills that we have learned up till now to solve, to learn how to solve equations where the variable is on both sides. And it's the kind of problem that's not hard, but it trips students up a lot. Um, so we're just going to conquer it here as we solve some problems. What if you had the equation 5x is equal to 2x plus 6? Now you see, you want to solve for x, but you have 5x over here and you have 2x over here. A lot of students look at that and, and they say, well, what do I do? Well, the answer is you have to combine all of the x's together and get them all on one side. And so just because there's some over here and some over here, it just means that you have to somehow move these over there. Or you could somehow move these over here. It doesn't matter. You can do it either way. You're going to get the same answer. So how do you proceed? Well, um, let's first try to move the 2x over here. Remember, the 2x is kind of grouped as a unit. You can't just move the x uh, by itself. You have to move the whole term. We call it 2x. So since this is positive 2x, we'll move it by subtraction. So we'll have 5x equals 2x plus 6. And we'll just subtract 2x from this side, and we'll subtract 2x from this side. Now, on the right-hand side, 2x minus 2x means the 2x's disappear. They subtract the 0. On the left-hand side, these are like terms. So 5 minus 2, or 5x minus 2x, is 3x. And on the right-hand side, the 2x's disappear, so you have 6. So now it looks like a familiar problem. This 3x means 3 times x, so we'll get rid of the 3 by dividing by 3 on both sides. And since you have a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom, they'll divide out, cancel. And on the left side, all you have is x. And on the right side, you have 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that's the final answer. And if you take 2 and you put it in here, 5 times 2 is 10, so you get 10 on this side. And if you put 2 here, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 6 is also 10. So you have 10 on the left, 10 on the right, and that's correct. Now I want to take a second to show you that it doesn't really matter which direction you go. You're going to get the same answer. In this case, we move the 2x over here. Let's rewrite the problem and solve it slightly differently because you might do something a little bit different than what I do um, whenever I do the problem. So let's say instead of trying to move the 2x and get rid of the 2x and move it over here, let's go the other way. Let's get rid of this 5x and move it over here. So again, you want to move all the x's to one side. So it's perfectly fine to do that. If we want to get rid of the 5x on the left, what do we do? We subtract by 5x on the left, and we'll subtract by 5x on the right. So on the left-hand side, 5x minus 5x gives you 0. And on the right-hand side, you have 2x minus 5x. So you have 2 minus 5, essentially. What do you get there? You'll get negative 3x plus 6. I think you can convince yourself 2 minus 5 is 3, because 5 minus 2 is 3 and the sign goes with the larger absolute value. And it's a common term, so you have the x's that come along for the ride. So how do you solve for x? Well, first we have to get rid of the 6. So we'll subtract 6 from both sides. You have 0 minus 6, negative 3x plus 6 minus 6. So on the right-hand side, these 6's disappear. And on the left-hand side, 0 minus 6 is negative 6, negative 3x. How do you get x by himself? Since it's multiplied by negative 3, we divide by negative 3 on both sides. On the left-hand side, what is negative 6 divided by negative 3? You're going to get positive 2 because negative divided by negative is positive. And on the right-hand side, the negative 3 cancels with the bottom negative 3, and so you're just left with x, which means x is equal to 2. Now look what happened. You got exactly the same answer. x equals 2 is exactly the same thing that we got when we went the other direction. In algebra, as long as you're doing legal things, that make sense and that are part of the rules, you're always going to get the right answer. It doesn't matter if you do it differently than me, uh, move this over or move this over. As long as you're doing legal things, you're going to get the right answer. And so that's what I'm trying to show you here. Let's work our next problem. What if we have y minus, I'm sorry, y equals 24 minus 3y. So again, we have a y over here and we have a negative 3y over here. I could try to move this guy over here, or I could try to move this guy over here. Either way, i got to get them on the same side. I'm going to move the negative 3y. So since it's negative, I need to do the opposite, which means I add 3y to the left, 24 minus 3y, and I add 3y to the right. So on the right, this goes to 0, and on the left, what is y? Actually, it's 1y plus 3y. 1 plus 3 is 4, so it will be 4y equals 24. How do I get y by himself? Since this is multiplied, I just divide the left by 4 and the right by 4. 
the fours cancel since they're on the top and the bottom and they divide out. So y is equal to, what is 24 divided by 4? It's just positive 6. This is the final answer. And if you stick that into the equation, you'll find out that it satisfies the equation just fine. All right. Um, what is our next problem? What if we have 4x plus 5 is equal to 6x plus 7? So again, I have a 4x over here and a 6x over here. I can do whatever I want. I can try to move the 4x over here, or I can move the 6x over there. It doesn't really matter. Let's move the 6x this direction. So we have to do that by subtracting it, because that's a positive 6x. So 4x, the opposite of that, will be subtracting 6x from both sides. So here we'll have 6x minus 6x plus 7. So on the left-hand side, what is 4x minus 6x? 4 minus 6. That's going to be negative 2x, because 6 minus 4 is 2, and the sign goes with the large or absolute value. So here you still have the plus 5, and on the right, the 6x's disappear, and you'll have 7. So now we work from outer to inner. We want to get rid of the, negative five, uh, the positive 5 first. So we do that by subtracting 5 from the left and subtracting 5 from the right. So on the left, the 5's go away, and you just have negative 2x. And on the right, 7 minus 5 is 2. All right, we're getting closer. How do we get x by himself or by itself? We divide the left side by negative 2 and the right side by negative 2. As we've been doing many times, the negative 2's cancel. So what you have is x is the only thing left on the left-hand side. What is 2 divided by negative 2? 2 divided by 2 is 1, and since you have opposite signs here, it's going to be negative 1. That's the rules of division. Uh, negative 1's the right answer. And you can check it if you stick it in here. Uh, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1, positive 1. So this whole thing is going to give you positive 1 on the left. Now if you put this here, this will be negative 6 plus 7 is going to give you 1. So you have 1 on the left, 1 on the right, and that means that that's the correct solution. All right, And we'll just solve one final problem. It's going to be 3 times p minus 8 is equal to 13 minus 4 p. How do you handle it? You have p's on the left, p's on the right. You can do anything you want. I usually try to move whatever's on the right-hand side to the left. So since this is negative 4p, I need to get rid of it by the, doing the opposite, which is adding 4p. So I'm going to add 4p to the left, and then 13 minus 4p plus 4p. I'll be adding it to the right, so that makes it disappear on the right. On the left, 3p plus 4p is just 7p. And on the right, the 4p's disappear. All I have is 13. So again, I work outer to inner, as far away as I can from p. I have to get rid of this negative 8, so the opposite of that is adding 8 to both sides. So on the left-hand side, all I have left is 7p. And on the right-hand side, what is 13 plus 8? That's just 21. How do I get p by himself? He's multiplied by 7, so I just divide by 7, both sides of the equation. The 7s cancel because they're on the top and the bottom, they divide out, giving you 1. So you have basically p is equal to, what is 21 divided by 7? It's 3. And that's the final answer. If you take this value of p and you stick it in here and calculate this, and you stick it in here and you calculate that, you'll find out that the left and the right-hand side are equivalent, which means you've got the right answer. So make sure you can solve all of these yourself. We have a couple more sections. We're just going to solve a few more problems, give you a little more practice with this, and you will increase your skills as we move along.